Often the next step is to think about an incorporated society. So this is formalizing, if you like, an unincorporated association um, and taking it to the next level. So putting in place um, an incorporate, incorporated society requires registration um, under the Incorporated Societies Act 1908, so pretty old law. Um, it's going through an update process at the moment. Um, it's about to um, go through the third reading um, through the parliament process, and we expect that'll happen kind of any day. Obviously, parliament's a little bit preoccupied at the moment, so it may take a little longer, but we wouldn't um, think that's going to be too far away. So that Incorporated Societies Act will be replaced. Um, it's a full replacement rather than amendment. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those changes uh, toward the end. Basically, the Incorporated Societies Act creates a governance structure that a society fits into. And that creates a whole lot of um, different aspects from member rights through to the role of the board or committee um, and the requirements that um, need to be followed for each of those groups. It sets up things like um, election, basic election processes, although the detail of that is always set out in the constitution or the rules. Um, and the, I guess the key framework um, for the entity is set out in the Act. There's a long line of case law as well, as you'd expect with, with law that old, um, and it has been tinkered with over time. It is a little bit uh, piecemeal, so that's why it's getting updated. Obviously, members are well supported in an incorporated society. Um, that's how it's, how it's established. Members um, pay levies or membership fees. Um, join as a member and then receive rights. Those rights usually include the right to vote, um, depending on the level of membership. Um, and that voting right will um, include things like um, who goes on to the board or committee um, and that sort of thing. Big decisions by the, um, by the incorporated society as well will often be voted on by members. So currently the requirement is to have 15 members as a minimum, although in the new act that's about to be reduced to 10. And a corporate member counts for three members. So that's quite helpful if you um, bring on a couple of corporates to get to the minimum number. Um, as we mentioned, membership fees and levies are well catered for. Um, the other funding source, of course, is donations and grants. Um, often having a corporate structure will help to um, obtain those donations and grants. So one of the biggest benefits of moving from an unincorporated association to an incorporated society is the, is the creation of that separate legal entity. So it becomes an entity of itself. It's not the members um, collectively operating. It is a separate, what we call body corporate, um, and is able to do things like entering into contracts um, in its own name rather than the members doing that collectively. As a result, um, those on the committee or board, um, as well as members, receive the benefit of limited liability. So if there were a, a problem with a contract, it would be the uh, incorporated society that were pursued rather than the committee or board itself. Now, that's not to say that the committee or board can, can do whatever they like. They are responsible um, for the operation and there are a number of duties that those committee members or board members need to comply with. Um, obviously a whole host of other legislation as well, things like health and safety um, and so on. So those committee members or board members, as long as they follow the rules and comply with their duties, will get the benefit of limited liability. And that's probably one of the biggest benefits of moving to an incorporated society rather than remaining as an association. So some of the other key benefits are the democratic processes that come along with um, moving to a, a more corporate structure. So members having the right to vote, um, put committee members in place um, for whatever term has been set out in the rules or constitution. Um, the committee is accountable to members. Um, so there'll be an AGM each year um, and at least one opportunity for members to 
um, put questions to the committee or board that is, is running the organization. It's an established governance structure. So it, it's fairly well established how it works. Um, and the cases um, sitting around the Incorporated Societies Act um, fill in any blanks that we've currently got. Um, the duties of committee members and, and board members, um, they're a little unclear at the moment under the Incorporated Societies Act 1908, but definitely being updated as part of the um, new legislation that's coming through. Yeah, so Incorporated Societies, um, again, the key benefit there is creating a separate legal entity and the limited liability for both members and committee. 